I, I worked in penitentiaries from 67 to 97, and over the years, we had a number, uh, particularly after the mid-70s, of uh, inmates who were transgendered. And honestly, I could see them going out, coming back within weeks back into prison. I used to think they were screwed up individuals as males and screwed up individuals on their way to becoming female. You've enlightened me. They were injured people both ways. That's right. And uh, thank you for that. Fantastic, David. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a romanticist, and I need to know how you met Sharon. <laughs> we met in an existentialism class at McGill University. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was funny, actually. Um, I was just like, a, like in the picture, just sitting there, zoned out, probably fantas literally fantasizing about just if I could just curl up and fall asleep. And then there were two girls sitting behind me who were trying to figure out their homework or whatever it was, asking. And of course, neither of them knew, and of course, I knew. So I decided to just sort of take pity on them, turn around and answer their question. And uh, instead of looking at the girl right behind me who was asking the question, Sharon, we, we just locked eyes and honestly, it was immediate, just like that. I barely even noticed the other girl. <laughs> just, and it was like sparks. And uh, after that class, I asked her out for drinks. Hmm? And uh, we spent the next seven hours talking and we repeated it after the next class the next week. And after that, we pretty much lived together. I mean, it was it, no separating us within within two meetings. Yeah, it was very romantic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, this was before we were dating. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, things work out one way or another. Yes. I get, I get your question completely. I get it. I get it. Um, but that's, I mean, it's a really hard uh, question to answer because honestly, I really think it's different for everybody. And these are the kind of things that people need to figure out for themselves. You can never tell. I mean, I know uh, some trans men who are some of the most effeminate people you'll ever meet, right? Really, really effeminate but they inside is still male, right? And the same way that biological males can be extremely effeminate, may or may not be gay kind of thing. So you just can't tell. You can, sometimes you can get a pretty good idea, but you just can't tell. And as for like when and what age, you know, I, like I say, I was in kindergarten when I first talked, first and last talked about it for a long time, right? So I knew by then, I just knew that I feel like a boy and enough to, uh, say it. Um, so I think that it's very important for educators to be aware if kids do try to express something, even if they don't have the right words, that they, you know, make it safe for them to talk, to find and help them find the language maybe, but never to impose or to lead because you just don't know. And because you may have an extremely butch female, extremely effeminate male, and that may be completely irrelevant to their gender identity or their sexual orientation. Right? That I was in kindergarten when I first started, to, when I first vocalized my transgender feelings. So I knew by, what was I, six? I knew by six enough to tell somebody that I felt like a boy. 
And so uh, even though I didn't understand and you know, had really no sense of anything, I still understood that I don't feel like a girl. I'm just not a girl to me by, by that age. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I think for, I don't know. Yeah, if you have, yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Okay, the, I mean, some cultures literally recognize at least uh, three genders, right? First Nation cultures, the, the two-spirited is, is recognized in a sense as a third gender, as I understand it, and other cultures as well. Many of them recognize multiple genders. So, you know, we're actually kind of behind the times, you know, in our very advanced society. We're very much behind the times in that because it's just there. It just is. There's a multitude of gender. There's gender diversity. This, you know, so to make that visible and let people put their own, put themselves in their own box if that's what they want to do. However, whatever one fits them. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do some counseling, and was it helpful for you? I did do some, but this is before I figured things out on my part. Um, and so I was really just kind of. Um, having fun with it. I didn't take it as seriously. I, I just, I was confused, so I, and I didn't have words for how I felt, so we ended up always talking about things that were completely irrelevant, so frankly it didn't help at all. Um, and I'm, there are, I'm sure there are really, and I never know gender specialists, right? I actually went to Christian counselor, went to a Christian counselor, and so of course there was even the sense that even homosexuality is wrong. Uh, so there were a lot of setbacks about whether or not that would be successful help or not. Um, but I know there are very good gender specialist uh, therapists out there who specialize in helping people who have issues related to their gender identities. And I, I bet you anything that it's very good, very good, very helpful. But for me, Sharon was my counselor, I guess you could say so. All right. Those are my favorite kind of questions. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think first not understanding, right? And I think we all fear what we don't understand. This is just a human phenomenon. Um, and when people don't give themselves an opportunity to understand, then that, that can just be indefinite. I don't get it, right? Or, the, or even some people would be supportive of the, as before I transitioned, so supportive of the lesbian, but then the transition, yeah, I get the homosexuality thing, but I don't get that whole trans thing, right? Because they are familiar with homosexuality, they know it, they've come to go through their thing, but then all of a sudden there's this new thing that they just don't have information on, or they picture 
I mean, I think some people even picture me wearing a dress when they hear I'm transsexual kind of thing. It's very confusing to people. Uh, and people don't like things that they don't get. Um, and then the religious, I think that that would be right on par uh, because for a lot of people it's just, well, look, this is just what the Bible, even though the Bible doesn't talk about transsexuality, to my knowledge, uh, it may talk about, you know, women don't wear, men don't wear women's clothes kind of thing, but uh, they don't talk about the experience of, of, of uh, uh, gender incongruity. So uh, there's just this adamant, you know, I've got this very, you know, well-stacked house of cards, and I'm sorry, but I'm not going to change it because it could all crash down if I even contemplate the possibility that this is just, if God created the world, then obviously this is just part of what is in it that was created, and they can't expand their understanding of, of this being part of a world that God created. So I think that they have a barrier there, and it just stops there. And uh, uh, I, I wish that these people could come and just you know, listen and actually enter into the experience of the people in question. But unfortunately, they are—they don't seem to be. Take, I don't want to take the risk, I suppose, or, or I don't know what. It, it's very hard. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I, I figure with time, with time, right? Because it, it's not going to go away, and then they'll adjust. They—I think they may think that this is just a phase or something like that. But of course, it, it's not. So we just wait. I would have made the other choice if I could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, uh, the question about the counselor, didn't you have to see some sort of... Oh, yes, 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 that is true. In order to transition, I needed to go and see a therapist and get the diagnosis of gender identity disorder in order to pursue the medical transition. Because they don't want, as she told me, she says basically they need to rule out that I have multiple personalities and that it's, you know, just this particular personality that happens to be male, and I'm going to transition and wake up one day as a female again and say, whoa, what happened, right? So I'm thinking, come on. And she knew that too. She says, really, I know, we're just doing this, going through it as a formality. You know, she was very respectful, but you kind of had to do it, go for three sessions, get your letter. So we just basically had a good time and just chatted and, uh, uh, yeah. There are very, uh, there are a lot of barriers to giving trans people access uh, I understand the, the need to, um, to reinforce medical treatment with the psychological care because it's not easy. The problem, I think, is when this is a, uh, it becomes a gateway. It becomes, uh, it's very, it's hard enough to do and, you know, you've got to go and you've got to figure out for yourself. It's not like there's clear cut anything. And, and when it comes to access to medical care, it's not like any other form of health care. This one you have to fight and fight and fight and half the time pay for yourself. Even, and, and even then, even if you're paying out of your own pocket for your health care, you need to go and get the diagnosis. You need to go and have this and go through all of those steps. So it's just so, so difficult to do. Um, and I think that that's absurd because it can take years and those are years that can cost people their lives. Right? If it takes that long, once they're out and they know, and you know, it's just uh, it's, it's a shame, really. Yeah. I was the director of the quality for the Union of Public Employees. Oh. And so one of the things that we did was we had a pink triangle committee. And um, the pink triangle committee members 
decided to invite tran our trans members, trans members who were a few people, to join me in trying to make because there wasn't really a place yet for them or to get to them. And uh, I mean, a number of really interesting things happened. Um, one of which was that one of our members was one of the prime movers in the case of uh, the FC Ontario government to allow people to have surgery and be covered. Non, non trans yeah. And so, yeah, so she, she really uh, worked with us to try to organize um, street workers um, in order to provide protection for them from that kind of behavior. It's a vicious cycle. You're absolutely right. Uh, the unemployment among trans people is, I mean, I think it's one of the highest out there. I think it's at least 40% unemployment among trans people. Um, and absolutely a large number of trans women particularly uh, enter into sex work because there's a market for it and um, they're not, they don't have options job-wise, they just don't. Um, and then, of course, they're subjected to violence um, much greater than, than e even non-trans prostitutes would experience, absolutely. And it's not, I hear about it all the time, I'm on all the listservs, you know, and a trans woman gets stabbed to death in a park in Toronto and it barely even makes the news. It just doesn't. Just swept under the rug. Sounds like uh, good work that you were doing there. Yes. Mm, that's a very good, very good question. I'm almost, um, I'm almost reluctant to admit that no, I've never been bullied in my life. Um, in fact, I was the one who bullied the bullies. If there was any bullying happening, I would tear them to shreds, like, honestly, or, or kick them in, in precious places. Um, and that would end it, that really would. Uh, so I, I, I feel very strongly about bullying. I think it's, it's um, absurd, ridiculous, and it just makes life bad for everybody, including the bully. You can't possibly call yourself happy if that's how you treat people. It's just not good. And it's got to stop. And as somebody who has been able to stop it, wherever I see it, it's never been a problem, whatever the age. And I never had the insecurities. I would just leap right in there, take a punch if I had to kind of thing. But it would stop. Don't tolerate it. Um, and I feel very strongly about that and that would be one of the primary focuses that I would like to take into schools. Not only to, I have plenty to say to the people who do the bullying, but I have even more to say to the people who are victims of the bullying because if you refuse to be a victim, then the bullies have no power over you. And that's been my experience. And so to empower the people who would be victims and then that would, that, then the bullies have nothing, they're powerless and they're just exposed as powers. <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> I'm glad that got asked. I don't know. The first, the first answer that I would have is, you know, has your clothing always told the truth? You know, I mean, it, it, but at the same time, um, it's right. It is the opposite. I do care. I care. I care very, very deeply. And then at the same time, I guess I wear it because there are things that I don't care about. I don't care. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't care what I look like. I'm not even wearing shoes. You know, there, I just. You go through so many experiences in life where if you did care about 
whether people accept you, if you did care about what people think about you, if you do care about uh, mean things that people might say and stuff, then you're going to suffer. And those things, I don't, it, it, I don't care. You, you do what you want um, and, uh, and I'll be okay. So in that sense, it tells the truth in every other sense, it's a complete lie. <laughs> but I don't know, it just gets, people laugh, people point it out every time, so, eh. yeah. Did you hear Rick Rose recently on CBC and on yep. his rant? Yeah. Because one of the things he said when he was being interviewed on CBC was, I don't care. Yeah. And that was actually what he said in, in radio. So Excellent. I thought that's I why he said CBC. I didn't hear that particular part, that's very good, actually, but I did see there was that rant that he did about teen suicide, I don't know how many people have seen that, if you haven't, Google it, Rick Mercer, teen suicide rant, um, and one of the things that he says is, you know, like, enough is enough, and it's not enough to just keep saying anymore that it gets better. We've all got to take part, and that includes if you are lesbian, gay, bi, trans, and things like that, and if you're visible, then be visible, and if you're not, be visible, right? Just be out there, no more hiding. Enough is enough. I like what you said about the tolerance level in terms of having these kids going in a ransacked library. The police would have been called in. Mm -hmm. There would have been an investigation. There would have been charges laid. But in this case, what you're doing is you're grief counseling everybody. Even though they know who was responsible yeah. for the bullying, and yet the same steps are not being taken. He says there's something wrong with that picture. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's kind of like the trans woman being killed in the park kind of thing and it getting no notice. Is it, we just enable that kind of thing happening by not treating it as if it were as what it is, right? People who have contributed in the case of bullying resulting in suicide, uh, that that would be what he called that even manslaughter, right? But it's not treated. It's just, no, I should. I'd love to. My goodness, let's invite him. Let's all, right? <laughs> let's all send him an email. Hey, Rick. Come to Perth and we'll, you know, come to St. Paul's. <laughs> I love him. I love him. Wonderful. Sharon's got him. She was so disappointed when she found out he was gay. <laughs> she loved him. <laughs> I was disappointed when I saw how short he was. Oh, I is he? I to the Royal Winter Fair, and I, I walked up to him, and honest to goodness, I, he looks so big on television. Yeah. Like, tall. He really is. I bet he gets that all guy. the time. He probably hasn't pointed out. We love him. Tall, short, but big head. He is. Well, he gets touch with him. Yeah, maybe I will. Yeah. Well, sure. If you tell me to, I will. Yes. Because right. yeah. he's on that same sort of cusp, what you're on. He, when he was interviewed on CBC Radio today, he was kind of saying, you know, I thought I was out. I was mm. out to my friends, I was out to my family, but I realized that a lot of people didn't know I was gay. So I realized I wasn't really out. So exactly. you know what? Here I am. Yeah. And, he, and he's really serious about this whole bullying thing. And so there may be an opportunity. You know, we talk about career launching. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, the difference being that he's good at what he does. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I will. I, I, I'll, I'll send, him a, send him a note. Yeah, definitely. I wrote to Ellen. <laughs> she still hasn't gotten back to me. <laughs> yes? Um, I was wondering how important has community been to you in terms of finding trans or queer communities to be able to find your own voice and find your own transition? Oh, well, yeah, community is always important. Always really when a person is without a community the person isn't whole uh, when Sharon and I were first together and I was female and stuff we really got you know embraced by the greater queer community um, as a lesbian couple and that was a wonderful part of our lives it really was um, and it helped us it was a support just a sense of like we're not alone we don't have to feel abnormal because obviously there's billions of people like us uh, and then actually transitioning actually cost, caused us to lose a little bit of our community there because even in the lesbian, gay, bi circles, a lot of people just don't get the trans thing. Uh, so, and even then we would go to an event, for example, but we would look like a heterosexual couple. So there's not really that, there, we lost a, a sense of community through that. Uh, but then there are, you know, trans groups. The problem is there's just not that many trans people, right? So you don't, you don't have this large trans community to tap into and be a part of, even though it's out there and across Canada. You can be on email groups and things like that. But locally, to be with people who are like you uh, is very hard, which further isolates trans people and further restricts their access to, to the knowledge uh, and the services and the support, unfortunately. But it's important. It really is. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
I don't think that it's similar at all. I don't know the data. If anybody else here does, uh, please tell me. But the employment rates for lesbian, gay, the, the thing is lesbian, gay, bi people have explicit human rights protections, right? Uh, whereas trans people don't. And they, group, trans groups have been lobbying to get gender identity as an explicitly protected, uh, because it's not. They say, well, it, it counts under, you know, we protect against sex discrimination, we protect against um, sexual orientation discrimination, and therefore you're covered kind of somewhere in there. But unfortunately, if a person walks in to a job interview and they look like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in a tutu or something like that, they're not getting that job. And so far in the human rights code, uh, there's nothing that they can technically do to, to claim discrimination on the basis of... of That will be, uh, that's a workplace by workplace. So for example, Queen's University, they explicitly say that they do not discriminate on basis of sex, gender, gender identity. They specifically name it. And in Queen's, they will not and cannot discriminate on you based on your gender identity. Uh, but another place will just decide, well, I'm not gonna, you know, it, it, whether they state it or not as their policy is their decision still right now. So you'll find workplaces where you'll have no discrimination, won't come up against any problems, but those are often very large. And you try getting a job at Queen's, I mean, it's hard for anybody kind of thing. So often it's very hard to enter into those. And because also with trans people, you have, you've got lives that are interrupted. So you may have, uh, you've got much lower education rates. The ones that are employed are significantly below uh, the, uh, uh, the average wage, but also below the poverty level. Even the ones that are employed, the majority would be earning under thirty thousand a year. So you've got the poverty as well. The you know the education that's lacking, perhaps maybe there's dropped out of university. Whatever I dropped out of univers university, right? So I don't have a university degree, and otherwise, you know, there's not a lot that's holding me back. And because of my appearance as well, I'm privileged in ways that many trans people aren't. Uh, so I'm. I, the problem is that the majority of trans people don't have the privileges uh, that I've had, and that leads to the problems that we see, the unemployment, the, the housing discrimination as well. Uh, there are, you, you know, people won't rent an apartment building to somebody who has an appearance of being trans. Um, so people live in the streets, they become prostitutes, etc., etc., etc. Really, this is, there's very few human groups that are as marginalized as this one. And when you get, the, the closer you get into it, uh, it's just devastating to see the state of, of people. So what's it going to take to change this? Hmm. Everything. <laughs> every person, you know, because it's what you encounter every day. It's the person, the, the cashier at the store, whether she smiles at you or gives you the evil eye. It's down to those little details that are the difference between quality of life and the lack of it, you know? Uh, and I know there are people who are fighting to change. I mean, there are people who are fighting to change everything on every level and all the power to them, really. Um, but just the fact that I'm constantly, even today, running into people who just, oh, before that I didn't know and now I know. And it kind of, like, I, I'm comfortable with it now. Before I would have thought this and now I don't. It takes so little to make the difference. And just like Rick said, just be visible. Just be out there. And I think that that's the biggest part. Because a lot of trans people, once they transition, go what they call go stealth, which is to just live in your, you know, I've transitioned. This is now me. I don't want anyone to know of my history. Many people even burn all their old pictures. It's just, like, it's just too traumatic to think back to the before. And they just want to live now as they are and be accepted as that and not have to keep defending themselves. So they go stealth. And what happens then is that the next time somebody encounters a trans person, they don't have a point of reference, even if they know. Like how many people in Perth know me, but don't know that I'm trans? So when they see someone who is trans, they won't know. But if I'm out 
and if the next person is out, and if the next person is out, and we all know, like I talk about my little niece, you know, Lizzie, just a little, uh, how old is she? I don't know. Six. Six. <laughs> you know, she'll go at, in front of her friends, like we'll be there, she'll say, oh, you know, um, that's my uncle, and you know, he used to be a girl, right? And so, and it's fun, and whatever, we have a good laugh about it, and the next time her friend sees or a trans person, it, it'll be different, because it was a no big whoop before, it's a no big whoop now, et cetera, et cetera. You just got to keep planting those seeds, I guess. Yeah. This morning, I opened up my Facebook page and I read a quote attributed to John Lennon. Whether he actually said this or not is beyond me. He was given an assignment in school as, as a boy and asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Write it down on paper and put your essay in. He wrote down the word happy. <laughs> the teacher kept him after class and said, John, you didn't understand the question. He said, you don't understand life. <laughs> That's good. That's excellent. I mean, he should have gotten an A-plus for that one, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> yes? Just going back to the question of what, what would make things change. And, and it's a lot of little things that you mentioned. And if everybody in this room had one conversation with somebody else Go viral. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Every, it's kind of like, you know, before this thing today, and we didn't know, like, who's going to turn up, will people turn up, things like that. And like my mom said, if the one person who needs to hear it, hears it, then it's all worth it, right? So, if everyone here knows a little bit more uh, than they did before, or just feels a little bit better, I don't know, just like you said, the happy thing and everything like that, and then take that and plant it, and take that and uh, then... Uh, that's, how it, that's why every person can make whatever little difference you can do. Do. Why not? You know? Yeah. Well, I would have liked to have transitioned earlier. And this is all what a lot of trans people will answer is, I just wish I did it earlier, right? Because I could have... Um, you know, I've got the, yeah, I got the hips and things like that. My body changed, and so now I'm stuck with the hips and all of that stuff, which I hate. Uh, but if I had, you know, people are transitioning younger and younger, um, and if they're not sure, right, there are hormone blockers to delay puberty until they can make a decision for themselves. Because, for example, a trans woman who waits until after puberty has a much harder road to go uh, because of the testosterone's influence and causing the growth and the Adam's apple and the facial hair and all those things. And if you can actually either delay puberty or, you know, if somebody really knows who they are prior to puberty, which frankly I believe a lot of trans people do, <laughs> whether they are safe enough, feel safe enough and confident enough to admit it. Um, so if you can actually give people access to the, the treatment and care that they need before their body goes in the other direction, uh, because that can really cause problems for the rest of your life, right? Uh, and personally, I would have liked to have dated Sharon as a guy instead of spending the first few years trying to be a girl, trying to act like a girl, trying to be emotive and affectionate and things like a girl, right? Uh, so I would have liked to have rather be, who, and then of course now she's like, you, you were so much more cuddly or whatever it was before, right? So I wouldn't have to go through all that. I wouldn't have to... Do, you know, so those are the things I would have changed. And other than that, just to just risk being honest from the start, right? Because in the end, admitting almost anything doesn't end up being as scary as it as it, you can think it's going to. For years, you can spend thinking uh, it's going to turn terrible. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And you do it. And, oh, that wasn't so bad. Why did I wait years? Right. So those are the kinds of things that I would have changed. Other than that. I think I'll. I know you do. Yeah. Mm 
Well, I think that anything that you do uh, respectfully and in the spirit of, of understanding um, is, is generally safe. Usually you can get a sense from somebody if they're open to talking or not. Uh, my experience has been that a lot of trans people just love to talk about their experiences, right? And to tell their stories. Um, and will often take the cue if you seem uncomfortable with the questions that you're asking, or if you seem a little apprehensive about things, then they pick up on that, right? So you always want to be warm, respectful, and genuinely, I, 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 I don't understand, and I'd like to understand this, for example, and then they'd love to help people understand. But everybody's different, and some people wouldn't... If somebody comes out and says, I'm trans and this and that, then they're obviously volunteering information right from the start. But if you happen to notice that this person probably would be trans or something like that, you don't just, obviously, you don't walk up and say, I think you're trans, can I ask you questions about that kind of thing? You know, <laughs> you just don't, right? So it's, it's always case by case, and, and I just think you're safe if you're just very, you know, respectful, loving, and, and, and just out of a sincere desire to understand better. Well. Boy, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've thought three or four or five years into my future. Um, I would like to... This is, this is the beginning. I don't know where, where, where things go from here. I'm, I'm available. I, I want to work hard. Um, and I want to do whatever um, I can to make life a little bit better. Uh, so wherever that takes me. And I expect... Um, Maybe I'll be a better speaker. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a little better writer. Um, but I, I, I want to just keep doing this kind of thing, really, and just getting better at it, and uh, going out there, whether it's, you know, I'm hoping maybe around Ontario, around Quebec, uh, I can offer things bilingual, you know, je parle français aussi. So there's a lot of open doors, and where it takes me, I have no idea. But I'll be married to Sharon. <laughs> Um, and uh, probably still living here and probably be just as, you know, dull as I am today. But other than that, I have no idea. I, I'm, I'm still too young to even think five years into my future, I think. I know, I know. Ask me tomorrow. I'm going to be on the couch watching TV. You are aware of the CBC page cash with stories. Do they? Dispatches would be one example, but there are others where you can be drawing your story and sell it to men. Um, a two or three men piece can get as much as 300 bucks. Wow. So where'd they get all that money from? A 15 minute piece. Yeah, that's Great a good idea. The CBC, they have a pinch site. That's a good idea. They're doing a lot of stuff on trans stuff. Hey, the CBC, wow. And this is time incredibly time. Yes, 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 yes. The yes. preservation of other lives. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And just the quality of it. Because what I'm finding is just this there's just so many there's broken relationships, there's 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 unhappiness, there's apathy and despair everywhere I look. And I think that we don't need to be living like that. And I have to work for myself, right? So as I'm working, then maybe if I, sharing that would also help and we can all kind of go on the same kind of journey together, which is just to enjoy our time here a little bit more, right? Because I've wasted enough time already, you know? <sighs> so, yes. Wow, thank you. We're gonna have to talk afterwards. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's great what you're doing. There is a great lack of education. And I know for myself, I was fortunate that the right people, I guess, because I didn't know what to do. They kind of formed me. Yeah. 
same story. Man. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't that funny that it can be, it can come down to just meeting a trans person and saying, oh, ah, I, now I, like every, all the pieces just start to fall into place. And it's the fact that, right, it took me until I was 25 years old to even meet another trans person. And then it was like, oh, well, like click right off the bat kind of thing. But why did it take 25 years for me to just meet a trans person? It's absurd. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I might have literally just thought like Rocky Horror, you know, Dr. Frankenfurter. Beyond that, I have no idea of anything to do with trans at all. Yeah. And then the people are lamenting, oh, people are going to try teaching this to our children and try to convert. And it's like, it's not teaching anything. It's just like literally recognizing reality. That's it. And you, you don't do anyone a service by trying to hide the fact that you and I exist, right? And in the medical profession, it is medically recognized as a serious condition. And the treatment is transition, access to hormones. Now, every, it's always different. Some people opt for no surgeries. Some people opt for no hormones, whatever it is. But the recommended is giving people access to that. It is not to try to change people's brains because they have tried that for decades upon decades upon decades and they haven't succeeded in changing the brain. But renovating the house works. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh yeah. Renovation. I would just like to urge everyone also to take on bullying and inappropriate jokes and not it's it isn't just it shouldn't just be up to the trans community or you know, gays to, to make change. The rest of us should all be part of you're absolutely right and in fact the queer community includes the acronym you know that LGBTQQSAA you know one of those A's is allies because they recognize this is a part of the queer community are heterosexual and non-trans people who are just aligned, who want quality of life for these people, and who, because it, you're put into the same, like my mom says, when I, when you come out, when I come out, it's as if it puts the whole family into the closet and they have to figure their own way to come out as well, about having a trans child, about having a this, and over and over again to everyone you know. And so you're, they're put through a very similar experience to what, what the rest of us are put through. It's part of the same community and it's, crit, it's a critical role. I don't know what we would do without the ally factor, absolutely. And in relation to that, to what you were saying, that we also need a community. And it's very hard to find other parents and trans kids to work either and need to work with it. So online, there are a couple of great groups that really helps to sort of see other people and their experiences. And one of the very common experiences is that their child was really struggling. You get your life back and you have something to live for. Uh, because if you're miserable right at home, right in your own body, then you're, then you're miserable. And if you're happy at home, happy in your body, then it's like the rest of things is, I, I honestly, when I transitioned, it was like, now that that's done, I'm okay. And the rest, I could kind of work on. I got the rest of my life to work on the rest, you know, but just to have the, the fundamentals down pat and then you appreciate everything that comes next a whole lot more, right? And that's what trans people have to offer, too, is this, not only just the, you know, as the First Nation communities look at it as this, the, the two-spirited, the privilege of housing both a male and a female spirit, is sort of how it is often described. Uh, and the, 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 to be able to look at the world from two perspectives at once, this is seen as a privilege, right? Um, so that traditionally has been recognized in First Nation communities before they were rather interrupted by, by others. Um, and if, our, if within our communities we also recognized the value 
I mean, I, I've, I've mentioned that trans people are often very um, um, uh, intelligent, very emotionally intuitive people, right? They really do have gifts to offer. And when their lives are miserable, when they're ground into the dirt, when they don't even want to live, then they have, what are they contributing? Rather than building these people up and tapping into this very valuable resource of people who do see the world from two perspectives at once, looked at life from both sides now kind of thing, right? So we're wasting a valuable resource. From what you describe, it sounds like he has things in his life that transport him out of himself. But when you're around other people, right, you see yourself through their eyes, right? That's that, that whole Sartre thing, the other, right? <laughs> uh, the person who sees you. And so when somebody's seeing you and sees, I assume that maybe this is somebody who would be perhaps trans female? Possibly, right? So when somebody sees this person as male, then he has to see himself as male, and then there would just be, right? So he can't transport out of himself around people, and that locked away. And of course, what's happening is this person isn't growing into herself. You, you, your, your development as a human being is interrupted, because you've just got to kind of act like you're supposed to act, and do this thing, and everything like that, but you're not actually forming your own character, you're not growing. It's, it's hard. I mean, like for me, for example, until, like I, I, I didn't talk much, very much at all. And certainly even once I began transitioning, before my voice had changed as far as it's probably going to change, um, I still wouldn't talk because I can't even stand the sound of my voice. Because it doesn't sound like mine when it's high. His voice in his head maybe doesn't sound like hers, right? So you, you, anything about that that doesn't feel like you feels like a lie, it feels like this, and you, be, you grow to despise yourself, of course. And so you don't want to hear yourself, you don't want to look at yourself, you don't want to be seen by anybody. But there is, of course, there's happiness. I mean, I know a little, how old is he? Like, five years old? Six years old? A little trans boy? He hasn't transitioned, he's just being raised, his mother is totally, that's fine, he's been a boy forever, right now, he's a girl. Physic biologically, but he always this and that, and the mother's totally 100% supportive. And this kid is just the most well adjusted, happy, you know, uh, and will be probably just fine because from the beginning, the right supports have been in place. By 16, this kid has learned a lot already, and the damage is already showing, it sounds like. But from there, at 16, fantastic age to, to, introduce, you know, these are options, you know, kind of thing. Right. Yeah, it's very, very, very tricky. And of course, um, you know, they certainly say that, it, you know, with, with the sexual orientation that people may go through a phase, like a, a boy may go through a phase where there's some attraction to other guys and that may pass or vice versa kind of thing. So you never want to just say, oh, this is what it sounds like, you must do this and take these steps right away kind of thing. But the person is the one in the posi position to know, always. Uh, but if they're not given a safe place to talk about it, then they can't even speak for themselves right. And that's part of the problem, I think somebody said, the importance of the allies, because trans people often can't speak for themselves. They just aren't equipped with the, the education, the confidence, um, the respect, 
So we need other people as well to, to help. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Calvin, I just wondered, uh, first of all, how much traffic are you getting to the site? And secondly, uh, have you had any other accident or do you want to go to the radio station? Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is very easy to follow. Uh, but how much other coverage are you getting from the media? Very little. Uh, it's been very, very hard. Uh, I mean, I've tried to promote this thing. Um, I can't think of any other way that to have gotten the word out, um, although it was kind of put together kind of last minute. Um, my website gets about maybe uh, on average 30 or 40 visitors a day, and that's with the promotion. Without the promotion, it can be zero, 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 then maybe you know 10, five kind of thing. Very hard. It's new, and it takes a very long time to establish a web presence and to also create a website that has something of value for people to come to. Um, the newspapers, um, most newspapers didn't pick up the press release. Um, and uh, well, I mean, what else is there? I mean, I tried, I tried to encourage people to come to this. Uh, no response. But before I did this, I was sending proposals to um, the school boards and things like that to say I'm available to do this kind of work. Um, and, uh, and no response, none. In fact, one school board, I won't name it, <laughs> but they, 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 they blacklisted me. Um, they said, we don't want to receive any further materials from you in this regard whatsoever. Um, so it's been hard. It's just been one wall after another after another. And I, I, I can't even offer this for free. It's, it seems ridiculous. So what I'm doing here, I've got it taped. Uh, hopefully it all worked. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my website. I'm going to show that to schools and, or, and then keep building on that and keep building until finally it's recognized that maybe uh, I have something that, of value to offer. Uh, have you considered a book? A book? Yeah. I mean, you're reading really on this You see lots of articles. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, I think that a book would, would take so long and it would become, it would, I just, I want to get to work now. Um, and it's almost as if doing it this way will keep things fresh, keep things relevant and personal and immediate. I would love, it would be great if I were write a book, I mean, you know, but that kind of thing would take a couple of years and then there's only those few people who would read it kind of thing. And I don't want to wait. I, I don't have that patience now. There's too much that needs to be done right now before the next kid kills himself or herself kind of thing, right? So whatever I can do, and then maybe down the road, I don't think I'd write a book, actually. Hmm. Well, see, that way I can do that and then just put it on my website and it's out there. So that's the thing, it's all about access, too. And with a book or with whatever, then somebody would have to then purchase it or whatever it is. And I just want it out there for everybody. Uh, yeah. Sandy Mort, right now. Sandy Mort. Sandy Mort is the son of Farley Mort and he's a CBC producer. Oh. Yeah. I know. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he has the Ontario Morning Show. He produces that. He does production for the New Hour shows. Uh, at the very least, what you're what you're presenting is so timely. They will want to interview you. They won't pay you to interview you. That's where you get into the dispatches and all the rest of it. Right. But these type of interviews will put your information out where you want it heard. And you'll also be able to listen to the feedback because if it's controversial, and you are, in the broader world of things, Can't help. people are going to phone up and say, I don't want to hear this stuff on CBC, or they're going to say, where did this courageous person come from? Yeah. That's right. It's all publicity is good. Yes. And I sure wouldn't mind getting in touch with Farley Mowat Sunny. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sold me right there. It's, Excellent, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Or get the, in the in the thing because the director's name is Paul Newdorf, and so in the press release it was Calvin Calvin. I really do prefer Calvin over being referred to as Newfeld, which sounds 
very not me, very formal. But then they, she flopped in, I think, uh, Newdorf. So Newdorf says this, Newdorf says that. And so I thought, oh no, oh no. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually um, didn't. I've considered it. Uh, one of the reasons that I didn't is because it's very hard to keep that kind of thing current, constantly changing, and it's it's out there. And there are resources where you can just Google sort of like trans listers or like email groups or support groups kind of thing. Um, it would just be a lot of work to maintain that kind of information on my website. And then there's also like, what if somebody doesn't like this group or whatever it is? Kind of, I just decided to save myself that. Uh, tons of stuff, tons, tons, tons. Um, Jan Morris, <laughs> we were just having this conversation. Um, I still haven't read much of what she's written, but apparently she's really fantastic, right? Uh, she's a trans woman, author, travel writer as well, uh, wrote the book Conundrum. First documented sex change. First documented sex change? She's the first person to Oh, I see. I see. As opposed to the, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So Jan Morris, for example. Sorry. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. Yeah. And the beauty of it is, I think that she talks very clearly about what it means to be idle. So everybody can relate to the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best kind, definitely. And then there's oh, tons of stuff out there. I mean, I don't know. Um, there's Omni Gender by Virginia Rainey Mullencott, I think. I, I don't know. There's just tons. I'd always be recommending things that I've read, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> and then that would be a limited kind of thing. Um, there's also like a tra uh, yeah. Um, Yeah, I gotta think about that because that's a very common question: is what resources? Um, see, I'm I'm so busy trying to create resources of my own that I really can't even think about what to promote that other people have done. Which there's tons of great work out there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> There's probably some good use for that. <laughs> okay, knowing yourself. Sounds good for families, knowing yourself. <laughs> yes, you notice my mother-in-law is a loud clapper as an, edu as an educator and a great believer in that. And your mother's holding herself back. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, that's a, of course, if I finish my degree in philosophy, I'm not sure what good that would do for the work that I, that I want to do. But certainly, either way, I, I, I really believe the whole self-educated thing, and I'm, always, I'm thirsty, thirsty, thirsty for knowledge. So I'm almost so busy learning that I don't have time to go back into formal education. But certainly I do intend to make myself available to continually work to improve what I have to offer, to make it available to anybody, even if it happens to be through a website, and um, to continue to better myself so that what I have to offer just, you know, hopefully will be, have a greater and greater impact and uh, to just and continue to learn as I go. Oh, well, thank you. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> wow, well, we'll have to have a conversation after so I can hear more of your thoughts on that. <laughs> uh, so, are we all spent? 
Thank you, honestly, for being here. It really means a lot. I, I just appreciate seeing all of you here, and um, hopefully we'll get some time to chat afterwards. And if not, you know, your email address, and uh, if I do this again, uh, which hopefully I will, then I'll be able to let you know, and we'll be able to stay in touch, that kind of thing.